Whenever I want to test a shader idea, I go to shadertoy.com to write it. And it is great. No color picker? No slider for uniforms? I can't even add my own texture? Where is the main function? And look, I'm a busy guy. I have many projects, so I'm going to create my own shader toy from scratch. Ok, I want sliders, custom textures, color pickers, and I also want to have a full optional 3D pipeline. And I know for sure this will be a cool learning experience, but I don't know how much I'll be able to do. But the first thing is to get the very basics out of the way. So, a shader is just like a computer program, but it runs from the GPU. And, in this case, this function will be executed once for every pixel on the screen, to create whatever you want. And see these things? They are called uniforms and they are just constants supplied by the programmer. For example, see this nice shader here? That's a nice material right there, but I want to be able to change its color. No problem, we can just create what is called a uniform. That's just like a constant, that can be set from outside, and use it as the color of our object. But shader toy doesn't give you any interface to modify the value of that uniform, and I want to do that. So I started from my framework and got a very simple IM GUI set up on the screen and made it so that I could render my shader directly into the IM GUI window. You might say that this is a lot already, like I even have a text editor here and I also render into this draggable thing instead of rendering to the window directly. But it really isn't, the text editor is not working, you can save your changes. And this thing was copied directly from my game engine. But now we get into the new and interesting stuff. So, for each uniform that I add in my shader, I want a corresponding slider. But how can we know what uniforms are present in a shader? Well, luckily, you can just ask OpenGL using this function here. Using that, I can just add them to a vector. And next, I can just add an input for all the available uniforms according to their type. So I added this color uniform here, and I can just change the color in real time. Now, things start to get interesting. I want a nice color picker instead of these inputs here. I want to be able to also write optional vertex shaders. I want to be able to write normal shaders, unlike in shader toy where there is no main function. But probably, most importantly, I want all of this to be compatible with shader toy. So, while in my shader toy, you'll be able to do cooler stuff. Bet you can't do this shader toy, can't you? You could also take a cool shader from there and simply place it in my program. Because I need to show you shaders in this video. And why write them myself when I have thousands of shaders to pick from here? So, the first thing I need to do is supply the special uniforms that Shader Toy has. And most of them are simple, like the position of the mouse, the time, or the resolution of the main buffer. Oh, and don't look at these things. They are used to add images and even other multiple shader stages. But I'm scared of that, so I'll do it later. So, after I took care of the simple uniforms, I took the simplest shader that I could find on Shader Toy, plugged it in, and after some changes to the code, it worked. And this experience of plugging something in and it just working is so cool. It reminds me of when I made a cheap 8 emulator, where after I was ready, I just gave it a game and it just started to simulate it. But we are not plug and play yet. Shader Toy already declares these uniforms, the version and the main function for you. So I would have to also do that if I want to have my program compatible with Shader Toy. But I would also want to give the user the option to create his own main function and declare the uniforms if he wants, so he can also use the shader with other projects. So basically, we need to detect if the user's shader has the main function or not, if it has the version, and if it has the uniforms, and add them myself, but only if they are not present. So I could just search for the word void main in the code, but why do that when I can make my life hard? So using my previous knowledge from when I made my own programming language, I created a tokenizer for the GLSL language and also parsed some things from it. Basically, I wrote some codes that can read the GLSL code and tell me what uniforms I have, if the main function exists or if the version exists. This was a lot of work, but I did it because I also wanted to add special custom attributes to the uniforms that would influence the inputs later. Like if I write here S color, the input would change into a color picker and it would also come in handy later maybe for other projects of mine. For example, I could implement a smart include system with this, and other cool things. And so, I'm planning on making it a separate GLSL reflection library, and even making a video about it. But for now, I managed to detect what things are present in the shader, and add them if absent. And with this, I can simply take a shader and drop it in. Look at this Super Mario TV. 
Isn't this insane? But we have more work to do, like this channel thing. And this is when I found this cool guy that already made a one-to-one -one shader toy implementation that looks identical and can also download shaders directly from shader toy. And he was also later kind enough to hop on a call with me so we can both exchange some knowledge. So go check his channel out. He also has a cool voxel engine, but in his repo he also had all the textures from shader toy there. So... Then, after some more help from ChatGPT and my previous experience with adding emojis to IMGUI, I managed to make these selectors. So this current shader is a texture from channel 0. I can just click here and select my texture. Or I can click this nice button to remove the texture. And you probably noticed that there are multiple tabs here. So here in shader toy, for example, you can select keyboard input or the buffers that are just other shaders. Or here you can select a cube map. But in my clone, you can select anything. <laughs> just kidding. But seriously, we need to implement these things. And I wanted to do the webcam first. So I took this nice library called Descapy and modified it. Just because I hate linking things directly. And now I can select the webcam here and I need to flip the image. But this got me to this uh, Giga Chad photo here. And so far, the project has been going great. Even a friend from my Discord server gave me his shader to try. And it worked very well. But now we have three more hard things to do. Multiple shader stages, 3D, and also adding attributes to uniforms. So, before I add the final things, please consider subscribing, because this project took me a ton of time, and actually, 0% of you are actually subscribed, so it would make me very happy. But now, the intermediary shader stages work like this. They are all run one after another, and you can use their result as a texture. And I realized, I just have to feed these textures into the input of my shaders, as I did with the normal textures. And that's it. So I modified my code structure to allow for multiple shaders. And after some more ChatGPT help, you can now go into an intermediary shader and load a file for it, and then use it. And unlike shader toy, I simply show the texture in the preview, so we can actually see the preview of your intermediary buffer. Then, using my new reflection library, I added the option to add this attribute to uniforms and turn them into color pickers. Nice. For 3D, I just had to add the option to also load vertex shaders. And I added some very simple camera controls and custom uniforms, like the camera view and projection. But I want in the future to add cooler features, like an intuitive light source to help beginners learn about basic light models and stuff. And maybe even polish it a little or integrate it directly with my 2D library. So if you want to see that, please share this video with others, because if you help me get 100,000 views, I will do part 2 and turn this into a very cool and useful tool. And until then, maybe check out how I made my own programming language or how I made my own game engine. See you there!